Greetings, church. I welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, on this beautiful day. Today, we continue with our Worship Anywhere series, our NCCP Worship Anywhere series. And today, we continue with our sermon series on Nehemiah. Would you take a moment to pray with me? Almighty God, we ask that you would open our ears and our hearts and our minds to the power of your Holy Spirit so that we may hear your truth and hear your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Savior. Amen. And we are now up to chapter 6 of Nehemiah, and we have seen this growing opposition from Nehemiah's opponents, that is Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem. From day one, they have opposed the rebuilding of the wall in Jerusalem. And the reason being is because they perceive it as a threat. They look at Nehemiah's leading the rebuilding of the wall and the gates and the fortresses as fortifying the city, preparing for battle. And so they fear that the Persian king will send troops and just wipe everyone out in all the provinces. And so between last week's reading and this week's reading, Nehemiah has also become governor of Jerusalem and Judah. And these opponents of his are most likely governors in those different provinces around Jerusalem and Judah. And so they, they fear what he's doing as, as, as causing a big problem, even though he has assured them that this is God's will, that he had the permission of the king, the Persian king, to do this. He even got the building materials from the king's forest. But yet they feel, in their, from their viewpoint, from being outside looking in, that, it, that Nehemiah has an ulterior motive. And so this opposition has been building for over 50 days, and now they are sending letters to Nehemiah. We want to meet with you in one of the villages in the outskirts of Jerusalem. And Nehemiah perceives that, that they want to do him harm. And so he sends back word that I am too busy with this building project to come and stop what I'm doing, to come to visit with you, to talk about whatever it is you want to talk about. I think in Nehemiah's mind, he's done, told them what he's doing. They just don't believe it. That's not how they're looking at things. And so we look at this threatening letter. He sends a fifth letter that's not sealed. It's unsealed. So it's an open letter that anybody could look at and anybody could read. And the things that are contained in this letter, not, nothing is true. The rumor that's going around in all these provinces and what they've wrote in this letter is that Nehemiah is proclaiming himself as king, that he's hired prophets to proclaim him as king, and he is building this wall to prepare for a battle, a military battle. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. And so what we see is that truth is not always objective, but sometimes it is subjective. It is from our own feelings, our own opinions. We, we look at things from one point of view. Nehemiah knows that this is God's will. He knows he has the permission of the king. He has told these men this is why he is doing the work. But they look at it as a threat. And they won't believe what Nehemiah is saying. They think he's full of stuff. And so they threaten to send this letter to the king so that Nehemiah might, might get afraid and just stop the building project. But Nehemiah is not going to do that. He's not going to fall for their psychological warfare. And when we look at this open letter, at first reading, it really reminds us of modern-day politics. See, some things never change even over millennia. We, we see that with our own uh, this, this last political campaign, not just the presidential campaign, but the campaign for senators, the campaign for House of Representatives. Each party will state as facts things that are not necessarily true. If we just look at the, the last couple of presidential debates, you know, there are questions asked, the candidates answer the questions, 
And then there are fact checkers that check these things to make sure that they are true. And they fall under three categories. Either the statements that are made are true, or they're partly true, or they're completely false. More times than not, most of them are partly true, and some of them are just downright wrong. They're just false. Rarely is the entire statement completely factual, completely true. But it does happen. And this is with both parties. The thing is, if we listen to lies long enough and they're repeated and repeated, they seem to become truths. We will believe them. And so we have to be careful. And as the church, we have to understand that we can't spread around rumors that are unsubstantiated. We can't just go by what somebody says and then share that with a bunch of people without, real, without understanding if it is true or not. Because when we spread gossip, we ruin people's lives, we ruin people's reputations, we ruin their livelihoods, we ruin their relationships, and it brings down the entire community. Everything that we hear, we should take with a grain of salt and do our own fact-checking before we share that with others. And some things are not meant to be shared, especially if they're not true. So we need to be mindful as the church to be careful with those kinds of things. The other thing that we see with Nehemiah, if we look at it from Nehemiah's perspective, Nehemiah has been called by God to do this. And Nehemiah has no ambition to being the king or rebuilding the, the wall around Jerusalem as a fortification to protect from uh, military attacks. He is building the wall, first and foremost, to honor God, and secondly, to honor the people of God. Because if we look at history, if we look at last month's sermon series about dominion, there was one passage where, where it's right before they all enter into the promised land. Moses is speaking to the people. And the one thing he keeps telling them over and over again, like a broken record, is that they need to first and foremost love the Lord their God with all their heart, with all their mind, and with every fiber of their being. They need to think about that, be focused on God when they wake up, when they go to bed, all during the day when they're at the breakfast table, lunch table, dinner table, when they're working, when they're sitting around, to write that reminder on their doorpost. Because as soon as they take their focus off of God, they are likely to fall away from God to follow smaller G-gods. Of course, we know as we look through the Old Testament that that happened time and time again. And so, and they were taken into captivity. Now, Nehemiah and all of Judah and Jerusalem have been in captivity for decades. They are now leaving exile. They are coming back home. People are still, still coming. And so what Nehemiah wants to do is rebuild these walls to keep the people safe, not from military attack, but from worldly views, from believing in other gods. What we, what we will see if we continue to read in Nehemiah is that when it comes for the Sabbath, when the Sabbath comes, that right before the Sabbath begins, that they will escort all the foreigners out of Jerusalem. They will lock the gates. So all during the Sabbath, they could keep it holy. When the Sabbath is over, they will open the gates and they will let people back in Jerusalem. What Nehemiah is trying to establish is a wall to keep worldviews away from God's people so God's people can continue to be God's people. That they are not shaped by the world around them, that they are shaped by God. And that's important for us we might, see, we might think it's weird to have a wall built to protect us from things like that, especially when Jesus comes to tear down walls of division and draw the circle wider and calls us to go and make disciples of all nations and spread the gospel so that we can build the kingdom of God or help be a part of that so that we can all become one. But, even though Jesus does that, we still need to have that invisible wall up 
that guards us from the world around us, that guards us from the world trying to shape how we think and what we believe and who we are, while keeping God in so that God can continue to shape and mold us back into the image of God that we were always meant to be in. So there's a lot we can learn from this short little passage in Nehemiah. First about truth, it's, it's, it, it can be very subjective. My truth is not somebody else's truth. So we need to look to God for that ultimate truth. Like Pilate said to Jesus, what is truth? Of course, Jesus was trying to explain to him. You know, God is that ultimate truth. If we look to God, we should know the difference between what is true and what is of man, what is man-made, what is made up. So like Nehemiah, we have to trust that God is with us, that God is calling us to do the work, that we are not giving in to psychological war warfare that would try to stop us from doing that work. And lastly, like Nehemiah, we need to pray that our hands are strengthened so that we can continue to do the work, that we can continue to not let the world shape who we are and whose we are, but that God does that. Amen? Amen. And God be with you till we meet again. And may God strengthen your hands for the work that God has put in front of you. Sooner or later, they become truths. What are you doing? You know you messed up my video.